Okay, I'm really excited to introduce to you our guest today. His name is Jacoby Nelson, and uh, he runs an organization called MIA, which stands for Mission Impact Alliance, and he is in Ukraine, which is so interesting. Um, I, I can't wait for the viewers to hear about your story because it's really great. Um, how did you get involved uh, doing mission, missions work in Ukraine? Well, at first I was studying to be a preacher and teacher in the States. I never imagined myself doing missions abroad, but I had always prayed, uh, Lord, wherever you want to send me, I'm willing to go and just make it clear to me. And I knew that at the right time and the right season in my life, God would make that clear. And originally I went to Ukraine uh, to meet my wife. What? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean meet your wife? Yeah. Like you, like, how did that happen? Tell us. Uh, well, we became friends through Facebook, actually. Oh, snap. Yeah. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, God works in mysterious ways. Yes, so he does. We started talking through there, um, built a friendship uh, of some sort, and then we began Skyping, and we Skyped for quite a long time, about six months. Okay, so and you really got to know each other. Oh, yeah, we knew each other level. really well. So when I landed in Ukraine, uh, we, we might have got to know each other in ways better than mm -hmm. you might dating someone in person. Right. Because our questions and our conversations were so intentional about getting to know each other. Right. And how did so, all your friends feel about you like wanting to go to Ukraine to meet this girl? Uh, a few of my friends said to my surprise that maybe that's what God's doing right now. Right. Um, cool. And I prayed about it and seriously uh, had a strong impression that that was what I was supposed to do. I had a couple naysayers. Mm. Somebody told me that it didn't seem like it was God's will, and I said, well, it is God's will because I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> there so, you go. And if it's not, then you will find out very right, soon. Yeah. But now we all know. We've just had our five-year anniversary. So, Yay! Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Thank I you. love that you went and you met her, and then ever since, you've basically been doing ministry and mission work together side by side. Yeah. Uh, someone I ran into called us a power couple because we just worked together basically on everything. She's a translator. Uh, I'm kind of the administrator and visionary of the organization. Mm -hmm. And so she's a huge encouragement to me. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. when you, you went to re Ukraine, you were uh, romancing and, and getting to know your now wife. Mm -hmm. And then what was it that you saw that, that led you to stay in Ukraine and have a heart for the Ukrainians there? Well, walking through the streets, you can feel the spiritual climate. You can feel the, and see the need for the gospel in those people. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the people there come from broken homes, homes led by single mothers. And while they're uh, primarily Eastern Orthodox, uh, traditionally in a nominal sense, it's, there's a high level of uh, just trying to survive there. Mm. And they put a high value on, on um, just getting stuff. Mm. Like there's a there's a real lack of spirituality there. And they have more of a survival mindset than actually living a life of abundance or to be happy or joyful. They're just trying to get by every day. Right. Yeah. They don't have the mindset of uh, they think there's little hope for success in their life unless they have some strong connection or corruption. Mm. Um, they or they have a uh, um, conflict. Get out of the country. Oh, Unless okay. they can get out of the country, mm -hmm. maybe they might find a better life. That wow. Way. So wow. the population there has actually been declining for about ten years. Oh my gosh. Uh, primarily because of the economic situation, mm -hmm. people don't want to have too many children, yeah. and uh, the divorce rate's very high. Um, most teenagers before they hit their teenage years have. Uh, drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes, so mm. the rates on that are very high, and most homes are run by single mothers. So, wow. yeah, the need there for the gospel is is tremendous. So, so it sounds like it's there's definitely a fatherless generation there, with a, with a, many of the homes being single mothers, divorce rates being high, and so do you work specifically with youth? Uh, we keep a an open door to every demographic, okay. but primarily the people that come to us are probably college and high school age people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so since the spiritual climate, like you said, is dry and lacking, how do people respond to 
a, quote, evangelical Christian? Uh, well, there's a high level of distrust. The Eastern Orthodox Church there has told them for centuries that evangelicals are a cult. Hmm. So they have a strong stigma. But with the growing influence of the West through Internet and Hollywood and things like that, um, there's a little more openness now. That's there's cool. still a sense of like, okay, you guys, you guys are cool, but if I drop my family tradition and, and join your evangelical group, I'm going to make my grandmother really upset. Mm. So that's kind of there. Um, what is the family tradition mainly? Eastern Orthodox, uh, where, you know, it's Jesus and the sacraments. Got it. Um, so is it's that not, very similar to, for people who don't know, is that very similar to Catholicism? Yeah, in many senses. It's, it's not... Uh, it's like a car engine. If, uh, if a car, if I try to attach a blow dryer to the car engine, it's not going to run very well because that part doesn't belong there. Mm -hmm. And so the gospel is salvation through Christ alone, you know, right. by grace through faith. Right. So if you try to add something else onto there, like confession or communion or baptism and make these means of salvation, mm. it becomes work-based and it's right. not a clear gospel teaching. There's a lot of that actual... It doesn't really give instill hope, it sounds like. It sounds like these people, like what no. you're saying, feel very hopeless. It instills anxiety, oppression, and control. Mm. So if there are good moral people there, uh, it's a lot of morality uh, void of Christ, basically. Mm. Okay. So. And so since people have this kind of stigma of evangelical Christians, how do you connect with them? Yeah, that's a great question. We find ways in the city to meet felt needs. And there's different ways you can do that. Uh, I know people that have done classes for pregnant women, teaching them how to take care of their children. And through that, you build a relationship, you build trust, and you're able to share Christ. They can see your life. They can see the mm -hmm. way you interact, the way you deal with different types of situations, your opinion and your worldview about different things. They see the contrast and how it's different than theirs. And many people are attracted to that. We uh, reach people through an English club ministry and we have usually over a hundred kids coming in there every Saturday and we teach English in a fun and engaging way hmm. and through that we build friendships we meet a lot of people and some of them come to our English camps and then get born again and get discipled in the faith Wow yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. so you're in this town of Odessa and you are meeting the needs of people. Have, have you seen salvations come from that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I've seen kids come to the Lord. I've seen kids up their game and say, I wasn't really walking with Christ before, but now that I've become friends with these people, um, I've just been encouraged to get more serious about Christ. Mm. Um, we've seen people uh, come and basically come to our meetings for over a year and be taught about the gospel and, and the way that the gospel practically impacts our lives every day and eventually come to faith and, and repent and get baptized. And yeah, we do see that. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good for you. That's mm -hmm. so incredible. And I know that you're trying to, or you are building a rec center uh, to, to hopefully kind of house all of these resources and needs. So um, how, how, what is that process like? How much money do you need to raise? What do you need to do? Uh, we're looking to raise 15000 a month to get started. Okay. And that might sound like a lot of money, but if you look at the budget for running a recreation center, that's a relatively modest amount. And we just would like a simple basketball court mm -hmm. and some other recreational facilities where the kids can come after school, get practical help, recreation and whatnot, find role models, counseling, mm -hmm. and just a safe place to hang out because most of these kids live in broken homes. Yeah. Something like this there does not exist at all. So. There's a great need for this, and it would help us reach many kids in the city. That's awesome. And what is, once you get this in place, what is your long-term vision? How do you see it impacting not only Odessa, but the country of Ukraine? Uh, well, my long-term vision, uh, Lord willing, is to plant a church through the center. Um, and we have a, a huge emphasis on relational discipleship. So as more young people are being discipled, we'll start a church and then we would like to maybe replicate this in other cities, may, possibly other countries as amazing. we train up leaders. Good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so amazing that you're leading the way 
in a place where a lot of people haven't really been and um, carried the torch of God and you're just really showing the light and, and meeting needs. It's really, really beautiful because you're in the trenches and really being Jesus' hands and feet. So where can people go to find out more information about Mission Impact Alliance? Yeah, they can go to missionimpactalliance.org. There's okay. videos on the homepage that explain the video and all kinds of information there. So. Okay, great. And then people, yeah. if they feel compelled or led, they can also uh, they can also donate to help you with mm -hmm. the rec center. Yeah, there's a donate button. That's really easy to do there. So. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome, Jacoby. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all for this episode of Hot Off the Press. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Kristen Dalton Wolf, and I'll see you all again next time. Be sure to chat with us on Twitter and Facebook, and use our hashtag JuiceTV.